So, hello everyone. So the first um, announcement from from mine um, from me. Sorry, um, is that actually um, the V19 uh, version is already processed. Uh, it took something like 24 hours. Um, the good that's the good news. Uh, now we are going just to fit all the data set in uh, in MongoDB and Elasticsearch, but I presume it's not so complicated. Um, yes, and uh, we had today also a small conversation with uh, Svitlan. I mean, like uh, the nickname is uh, Kaleidoscope, something like that. Yes, that's me. Svitlana. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi. Uh, yeah, exactly. About how we can improve uh, pi the, the structure of the pipeline uh, even more uh, in terms of multiprocessing, multithreading, etc. It's a matter of experiments, I presume, uh, because still there are some like some some uh, bottlenecks that are difficult to crash. For instance, the size of the models. Uh, and the fact that we want to uh, annotate with uh, five different models every text, I mean, like to annotate every text with five different models, we need to load them somehow. Uh, and um, yeah, that's. Uh, but it's I, it's. I think it's something that we can we can discuss further. We can also uh, experiment with the code. The good news, I mean, like the most important information, I think, is that uh, it's already done. For V19 and V22, then we can compute delta. Uh, I I haven't implemented yet the like delta option in the pipeline, but it's it's also not, not complex because it's just the uh, the the list of uh, uh, SHA numbers that are excluded, so to say, uh, or already processed. So they uh, therefore they must be excluded from the uh, um, pipeline. So so simple is it? Uh, yeah. That's, do you have any questions about it? And Big win. It's a big win. So everybody's yeah. super happy. No, I mean like- Thanks, Lukash, for all of the attention. Yeah, and I, I had a question to Slava. Yeah, to yeah great job. That was not uh, easy. To Slava, actually, because you said, uh, you told me yesterday or two days ago that you, you tried also to run on uh, your machine. Yeah. And, and how was it? Still running, uh, so for me, because I have only eight uh, core CPU, so it's like uh, 48 hours, okay. but still it's running. And uh, no, also, I, I, I did a check, so all files are correct and uh, contains uh, UMLS and uh, other stuff, so everything is fine. And I have good news for you because I also have uh, this process that can read from uh, core 19 after they did these breaking changes. Yeah. So in principle, we, we can just uh, run uh, your pipeline uh, on the latest version, and I think it should work. Okay, good. I mean, like it's not like even if the structure is different, then you need just to change maybe some of the lines to accommodate to the just new one, basically one line uh, to read uh, everything from uh, latest version, and uh, well, it, sh it should work, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not complicated. I mean, like the it's. Like that, that's not a challenge, uh, like to read from the JSON file. The challenge is- No, 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 like no it's, uh, we're not talking about uh, JSON file, but what they actually they did, they removed a few columns, also they merged columns and uh, they did something else. So, I mean, for this latest release, we already have a process that can read everything and uh, we can create new index of uh, uh, latest version, basically. Okay. Can I ask, um, when did that happen, the change? Uh, from 26, right, Anton? From which version? So, I'm aware of big breaking changes was uh, version V15. So it was 12, then breaking changes 15, then it was 19, and then subsequent no, I, I one, I think it's mostly incremental. I think 20 something. There was another one? I think so because like when I was trying to run the um, older version of the pipeline on the uh, version 25, I think, yeah. that's when I had to write the completely new 
like class to process uh, mm -hmm. from the JSON. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, so 25 is changed again. Okay, I think so, but I'm not part. sure if it happened sooner than that or not. I was just curious if okay, someone knew. Uh, in regards to the pipeline itself, it's not a problem because then you need to accommodate the different, uh, like to accommodate the code to the this new JSON file stack. Uh, you that's just new, new function, basically. Yeah, yeah, but like the the, the big issue is, is, however, it's like that what we talk already with Svetlana on on Slack, namely mm -hmm. how we can make it faster because the how we take out different uh, parts of the JSON file. Okay, whether it's abstract or some sections, etc. Okay, that's not a big deal. The big deal is actually how we fit everything into size spacing models and how can we make it faster. And uh, still, because like uh, when we want to um, to work with five models at the same time, the problem is of course that on one pro process, on one worker, it's uh, something like twelve uh, gigabytes. So mm -hmm. for most machines, like for, I don't know, I, I'm not speaking now about those uh, customized RAM heavy machines, but those like normal servers where you don't have 12 gigabytes per CPU. It's like, mm -hmm. that's not the case. Most, mostly you have something like a couple of, C less than 10 uh, gigabytes per CPU, something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and, and, and uh, multi-threading, uh, yeah, it's, I think we need to, in next days, we need just to play around with uh, with those options. And uh, I would be also less optimistic because like it's it's a lot. I mean, what we want, it's a lot in terms of um, of functionalities because we want like all possible tags from all possible models. Mm -hmm. so there is some, some, some uh, limit for that and uh, yeah. That's but but I think uh, if we'll define priorities first, uh, it will be of course uh, Delta. So we need to implement Delta. Yeah. And second thing is documentation. Yeah. Just uh, very simple steps that people can can just execute and to get pipeline up and running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Document pipe like delta and documentation and to improve. Yeah. So so for this week we actually should. Should do. Yeah. Then, then it's uh, yeah. With some examples as well. I mean, like note simple notebooks. Uh, mm -hmm. How to uh, work around? Yeah, and uh, uh, the biggest success I see if all people from all teams will start to use the same pipeline actually to do uh, something. Yeah, something. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, but the, the idea of this pipeline is that you executed this once and you have all data and you can do something about those data. So, uh, because like to, to, I mean, this pipeline makes sense when you proceed with this pipe, uh, with it, the whole corpus, like mm -hmm. it's not just a tool you can play around on the sums. Okay, you can play around it, like just to see how it, it works, but like meaningful uh, employment is just when you run this on the whole corpus and you get all the annotation uh, uh, homogeneous for mm -hmm. all uh, data, for all files. Uh, yeah, but, uh, let, let's imagine situation. So now we have coordinating yeah. and uh, we have hypothesis tool. So let's think about people, uh, researchers coming to us and uh, just doing annotations with hypothesis. So all links to paper, new papers that not included in Core 19 will go to the same pipeline in the, exactly the same format, and we'll get all these annotations uh, done by artificial intelligence, and they can actually provide feedback on what they think is correct, and uh, we can improve all yeah. of uh, machine learning models. Uh, that what i would say is also okay that i the, the pipeline cannot be like just court 19 specific it mm -hmm. should be at least some models should be like universal in the sense any text you can as a put in any type of text and output like our standardized json uh, file yeah. uh, json annotation in the sense okay all models from science spacey bunched mm -hmm. together and that's how we annotate every possible text uh, from where, wherever it, it comes uh, from. So, yeah. Yeah. And this would, be, this yes. would be really useful because this is the exactly the problem that I encountered just recently. That's why I began like jumping into this conversation. It was yeah. because um, 
I wanted to use the same pipeline on a completely different data set in the task VT immunology. And I found that it was very difficult to understand how to use my own completely separate data set with its own whatever structure, not even JSON or whatever, <laughs> um, with this uh, pipe like NLP pipeline. So yeah. that was kind of because you guys are kind of right now so tied to the cord, you know, pro data processing. I kind of ended up having to kind of take pieces out of your pipeline and just create my own like yeah. standalone functions. So oh, I, think, I think this would be really like, I, I know it's not um, like, I know that the paralyz uh, parallelization is really important uh, right now, but I think it's equally important to have the pipeline be extensible so that other researchers like me, for example, can come in and just run it on their data set separate yeah. from core. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, that's 100% right. I mean, like, it's uh, obvious. Uh, yeah, but the, the focus was now like on core 19 because actually we, 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 when we made a long way from this initial like Brandon style uh, notebook uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with uh, the panda, like uh, with uh, date, pandas data frames and uh, yeah, I mean, like this long way uh, behind us. Uh, but we right. missed the normal process because first it was just prototype; it was yeah. really experimental. And uh, this different step of maturity, it's basically it's now come into production state that everybody can just run and uh, reuse. This yeah. is how it should be, and uh, the same we have for the kernel now because we are able to uh, run different instances. And we can connect the kernel to this pipeline that you just produced, right? And we can get all this stuff that uh, coming from this pipeline to into the kernel. Yes. So there is already working pipeline and uh, also great potential because uh, now we are talking, uh, we're discussing with Charlie how we can get all uh, UMLS stuff, for example, mapped to a uh, biological expression language and yeah. get some yeah. some uh, real graphs yeah. link, links to real graph right yes yeah. so uh, this is actually potential to get all the disambiguation done properly and uh, to do other interesting things yeah as it mean, like actually now we are approaching the thing that we we want we wanted to discuss at the beginning of this group like yeah. if with jeremy and and uh what was her name uh rosa Rose, yeah, uh, yeah, Rosa, sorry. Uh, all of this kind of misunderstandings about how we want to uh, use uh, this is biological uh, biological expression. expression language to yeah. to fit uh, to to to, um, to fit to, to uh, this automated automat automatically uh, preprocessed uh, data. And now, now we have slowly but slowly. A kind of a tool we can we can work mm -hmm. with yeah and i would say uh, from what i've seen in the past uh, if we'll use uh, some tools from semantic web community it will be really advanced pipeline already because you can query a knowledge graph and you can get much more uh, information and insights that can help you so yeah. it's it's very cool what what uh, what we're doing now uh, yeah it's like that still the bottleneck is like the multiprocessing like the, i i believe firmly that there is some upper limit you cannot make it smaller and faster yeah. and uh, i think that we need to talk with r to how about some additional credits uh, from uh from google or amazon uh, yeah. just to to be able to run from time to time and a big instance like those uh, those with a couple of, uh, not with a couple of CPUs, but like 20, 30, 40 CPUs. Uh, because we, we, if we have so many different data sets beyond CORD 19, mm -hmm. it means it's like there's, there's a similar amount of, of files. So then we need money just to, to run it. Uh, yeah. From so, so, yeah. Basically, yesterday, uh, Arthur announced that there is a kind of process already initiated to uh, around uh, of um, Coronavirus Foundation. So it's still in discussion and uh, there are a lot of issues that uh, we should solve. But basically, this is a way how we can sustain this infrastructure. And after all credits will be gone, 
we should be able uh, actually to approach people and probably to do some crowdfunding or just to be involved in some projects uh, as a partner. So there are plenty of opportunities and uh, we can consider, consider different uh, uh, things to do right now. Yeah. So, but just saying that like when we want to process with this pipe, even if this pipe will make this pipe like faster and, and smaller, that still it's it's not for one machine. It's even not with uh, for one simple server with a couple of CPUs, uh, unless you want to run it for a week or something. No, no, no. But, but the way I uh, already uh, provided description, the way how it should should be working actually uh, every time when uh, new data are coming, let's say to core 19, it should be some webhook. Uh, that will start a um, pipeline uh, and uh, it will be built uh, in cloud and it will be executed. It will be running for like 24 hours and after it will produce something, it should put all results in uh, Dataverse, in our data repository. And after it should stop. So yeah. the process should be completely automated and uh, we should just uh, be able to see all these steps uh, in in this chain of pre-processing, and we should 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 understand if something went wrong and how to fix it. Can I ask one more question about the uh, the RAM issue? Um, hmm? um, right. So far, we've basically been talking about um, like however many processes we have. That's the number of spacey models that we spin up. In RAM, which is of course a problem, because if there are 12 gigs for all of them, it's huge. But um, I don't know. But is it possible to run Spacey like on a server and then just query it? Like, like so, you okay. only have it the 12 okay. gigs? <laughs> uh, like, okay, when you run, uh, like, imagine we have a kind of a science space because a science space uh, mm -hmm. uh, server it still has a, a certain like limited capa, capa, uh, limit uh, limited uh, capacity so it's like processing certain amount of uh, text per minute it means that if you have 60,000 of doc like it's not a problem to run this pipeline on single cpu on your laptop the problem is that you need a week to, to finish the whole uh, court 19, for instance. Mm -hmm. that, that's the, the problem is of parallelization. Like you, you cannot, even with, with, uh, with the pipe uh, option uh, from Spacey, the, there is some limit for uh, multi-threading and uh, otherwise it will be stopped. So simple is it like, uh, it's just, it, it cannot process unlimited number of texts at once. Mm -hmm. I see. So you, you, you can optimize this in the sense that, and that's exactly what the, this function you called in, in the, on, on Slack uh, pipe it makes. It, it, it uses multi-threading to, to slice the text into some smaller batches and process the text uh, and, and, and pro, uh, processes to process the text uh, in, in some batches. But even for that, you have some, some limit. And the limit is, of course, uh, uh, the RAM actually. And uh, if you have a uh, bigger batches, then you take it takes also longer to process them because uh, uh, most of the uh, science space models are uh, neural networks written in Cyton. So it it will also cost some uh, some uh, some resources in terms of RAM and in terms of CPU. Oh, okay, it's multi-threading so just cpu uh, it's just around yeah sorry mm -hmm. yeah but, but uh, i think uh it's possible actually to get all sentences combined into one document and to do like one document per time because now we are doing every sentence and after it should be some some process actually to reconstruct everything back do like reverse engineering and to get uh, all these uh, annotations on the sentences level okay i Actually, we don't make now one sentence per, uh, per like one sentence uh, at once, uh, one sentence per, per, per run, because yeah. I put actually the whole section into an uh, into okay, no section, but, but I mean about document. Ah, okay, document. Okay. Yeah, mm, yeah then, then it's like, um, okay, then we can uh, run like this pipe option on the whole document. Okay. Uh, 
And okay, that's what I also proposed already on Slack that depending on the length of document, we can, uh, we can either make this multi-threading or just process it, it normally because some documents, like you have a zip fiend distribution of the length of documents. So mm -hmm. you have a plenty of docs that are, it's like, it's some just abstract or some uh, very small uh, chapters uh, mm -hmm. and it will cost more just to multi-threading them yeah. instead just to proceed the, this four or five sentences at once. So, right, but so then that's where I responded to you where what you might be able to do is combine uh, uh, the documents together um, by the amount of bytes that are that, that you want to use to fill up however much memory you want to fill up and then later after you're done trans um uh, processing those you know those texts with that many bytes you do the reconstruction of putting them back into your document mm -hmm. so i mean you have to keep track of them a little bit but it's yeah. more like just keeping track of things and bookkeeping yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, even even not because like you 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 put them in pipe as a list and you receive the say the list in the same yeah. order. Yeah. So even of course you can I think you can play around like you want the as soon as possible the first file per process, but I think it's not the case that uh, yeah I mean like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, quick. Uh additional info for, for this discussion. Essentially, we kind of start discussing batches, right, of how many documents, maybe to batch them together to into one process, etc. I just found the change log for COVID-19 data set. Yeah. So indeed, the breaking changes were mid-May, something around V15. Right now, we don't have, because it's daily releases. And I'm checking out every day, the changes looks to be like less than 1,000 documents. Yeah. So yeah, every it's... day, essentially, incrementally, we need like to process thousand documents. It's... So the question is like, if we're talking about this ideal batch size of text to to utilize the spacing models efficiently per core, whatever, like you know, if we will find this uh, nice formula, how many documents will be there, right? Yeah. If it's thousand, for example, like essentially daily batch is just like one process. We are super lucky if it needs to kind of you know, span a couple of processes, then it's again more work, etc. But you know, some information to consider, like how big of a batch are we talking about if we're talking from this end? I think that that's not now. We are like we have this V19 and we can do uh, Delta. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. I think we need yeah. like, the whole story about how make it faster is beneficial for all not Cord19 data sets that we have. From, uh, from yeah, but I mean, like, we already did Cord 19, right? Like, there's a thing, like, this is done. Now, what's the next step? Oh, we want to pro process increments quickly or apply the same uh, pipeline to something else, which is yeah. probably, again, smaller chunks of, of, of data, etc. Right? Uh, That's kind of the goal of, of this. The, the question is how how big are data that, uh, that are already mm -hmm. uh, scraped by us, from, let's say, from the web? Uh, in comparison mm -hmm. uh, with uh, court 19 it's the same size with it's the same size all we are talking now is relevant stays relevant because it's like it's still a tens of thousands of docs that we need uh, run through the same pipeline so no we were talking about 270000 uh, data files and yeah, total size big. is about 800 uh, gigabytes yeah, that's yeah, that's that's why it is, takes, it, is it pure text, Slava? Is it pure text? No, uh, there are different different data sets on different mm -hmm. topics on different uh, from different disciplines, and uh, well, I don't know is, what we can we can find. I think out of those files, in a sense, what will be need to 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 run this pipeline that we're discussing will be again some smaller portion of it. For example, if it's a huge CSV file mm -hmm. of like digits, you know. The yeah. only thing that matters for us would be like the column names. Yeah. So in yeah. a sense, a I guess we need to data. do this, this like analysis of like, I guess we need an assessment function just takes the, the data kind of scan what we have in Dataverse and yeah. just to simply see, such so what we need, right? This classification of documents. Is it like what quantification? Like, what is it like, like I mean, numbers, files, or is it like, how many texts out of it? How how much of that text makes sense to 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 
pump into the our NLP, but like, sorry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, anyways, like a lot of good stuff to come. Yeah, but but a lot of files they they uh, contain, for example, uh, geographical names. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. really difficult to avoid uh, <laughs> to run. Oh, so you mean file. even on on the level of this kind of yeah, yeah. So, of so you, you have need. you have uh, proper variables, right? And uh, it's already part of metadata. But the content mm -hmm. of file it contains, let's say, all provinces or uh, mm -hmm. states or whatever. Yeah. So this okay. is where we need all all this uh, NLP stuff. In this regard, we can, I think, do two th things. At least one is um, uh, achievable this week. Namely, we, we need to make the, uh, uh, the, the pipeline uh, more generic in the sense every type of text, like input, uh, as, a, as an input, you, you need to accept every type of uh, text just and not JSON file from Court 19. Mm -hmm. First and second, that what uh, Anton already described, namely, uh, we need some analysis in terms, okay, what what precisely those data have. There are more like uh, statistical um, statistical data with some raw text, natural language description, or there are some uh, uh, court, court 19 like data. So a lot of uh, natural text, uh, papers, uh, articles, whatever. Yeah, but we, we already can, can <laughs> tell you that uh, there are basically different data sets with different types of information. So it's not possible to predict. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, no, the thing is like it's not about prediction, right? It's just kind of like testing. Like we need a quick function that, mm -hmm. let's, let's say, tries to run spacing model. No, oh, it, you, you can't run it. Okay, we, we don't try to load the whole, yeah. you know, all of the, our models, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of I I mean by this. You, uh, yeah, for instance, like you don't want you don't want to now to to force model to uh, to mm -hmm. transform tables into some uh, natural language whatever, yeah. and to force mm -hmm. uh, now um, spacey to to annotate numbers. Okay, because spacey can annotate also numbers in the sense it just produces yeah it's 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 numeric 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 but it's. Yeah. It doesn't have. Uh, uh, actually, qu quick question to Svetlana, right? Y you mentioned that you already have some data in mind you want to process. Maybe it will be useful for you to share with us what type of data you want to do and we could kind of get something from that discussion. Yeah, I mean, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I linked already uh, in that same thread that we were talking about to the code that I wrote that's like separate and more extensible. Um, this mm -hmm. is, uh, this data set is this Fraunhofer data set. It's uh, a manually crafted knowledge graph. Um, I'm working for the TASVT immunology, mm -hmm. like knowledge graph sub subgroup. So um, like you can kind of see it already there. Um, it's just, it's just I have these like sentences, uh, like that are just extracted from this data set that they provided, and they're just different like sentences. Like it's just not Core 19, but they're not. It's like, um, in my case, I think I have like maybe one or two sentences per entry, and I'm just using like NLP mm. pipe to just process the whole thing in one go and I don't have any parallelization here now because it's a small enough data set that it's okay. So I, I mean, mm -hmm. in terms of my immediate needs, like I've already written the code that I kind of I needed and I don't need any help, but I kind of just think that like I can kind of foresee a situation in which we are working with more data sets. Like, it's like for our project, I hope that we can find more data sets from you know, mm -hmm. other knowledge graph type resources or something. And then, you know, it just would be useful to have a pipeline that can be run no matter where the data comes from. And so mm -hmm. what I've done here in like this little small part <laughs> of the repo is I just um, created like these simple functions like in spacify.py and it just created some very simple functions that take care of the spacey pipeline basically that are agnostic to the data set that it's coming from like there's no pandas stuff or um 
JSON stuff. It's just you give it your list of texts and it does whatever it does. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the thing that we also can talk later on on Slack is uh, actually how, uh, because I think it would be also a good thing to like to uh, promote our standardized core, like core to 19 related type of annotation we have. So for instance, all the all those um, UMLS or not UMLS categories that we're using from different uh, science spacing models because uh, actually it's, it, I think it's a kind of a standardized, for now, our standardized type of annotation that we, we have. And uh, we can also share that with other teams to like to establish a kind of a, yeah, a kind of a annotation standardization. Yeah, Doesn't definitely. I mean, one thing that we're looking at in that group, the knowledge graph group um, is that like, so, so we're trying to automatically build this knowledge graph and it means we need entities from the text uh, and we need their locations in the text, uh, which is something that Spacey can provide. And um, then we need uh, relations between those entities. So for now, the standard we're going with for the relations is this pi bell thing. Um, and the standard that we hope to go with for the entities would be um, this that we see in the Fraunhofer, which they have these um, ontologies, like they have multiple ontologies having to do with like proteins and chemicals and genes and whatever. So we're hoping to kind of funnel everything or convert everything into that. But we haven't really like gotten to that point yet. So it means that this idea that we have about the standard might still change. So like for me, for what I've done, what I've needed so far was to have the entities annotated with their locations in the sentence. And that's all, I mean, I had a simple kind of small data set. And so I was able to do it, you know, with Spacey, like just on my own. But I'm sure that, you know, if we're also annotating with this thing and this thing and this thing, then yeah, we're going to start needing more of a standard. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. Uh, it's, okay, so uh, do we have any further questions? Because I think that the discussion is slowly starting to be very uh, detail specific and we can have this also on Slack. Uh, just by looking at the code, looking at the output, uh, it's much easier. Mm -hmm. Because now it's like, it's, uh, it's, it's getting more abstract, I think, for some of us. Uh, do we have any questions? No? Okay, then I would I'm say well, we can finish for today. Uh, I need just uh, like still to contact some persons being responsible for MongoDB and, and uh, Elasticsearch to feed the data into, but I think that's it's not a big deal. Uh, they're already busy. With, sorry? They're already busy. <laughs> busy we with We still task to move uh, stuff from V19 to Mongo and Elastic. Okay. Yeah, but like I didn't share V19 with anyone. So with what? Ah, okay. So, so uh, <laughs> you no, I mean, but, but wait, 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 wait. This is a really important question. So just put it in a, a gzip file. So <laughs> just compress everything and upload in Dataverse to make okay. it yes. tenable. Yeah, okay. That, that I can do. Uh, yeah, and after they can actually get stuff from Dataverse and they can upload. Okay, to okay then I'm going to Dataverse. Okay, no, because actually you wrote that uh, something on Slack that uh, to Panjala to contact me and I con I tried to contact uh, Panjala. Yeah, contact actually me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I pointed to you. <laughs> okay, uh, never mind. Okay, that, that's, that's good. Okay. That, Quick knock for everyone. The only thing that definitely works within Corona Y the common language or medium of communication is Dataverse datasets. This is where everything kind of works quickly. Everything else is always microservice, kind of like this cloud disaster when everybody is pinning each other and then it takes just some time for simply the right people to come and jump on the same call finally. So thank you, Svetlana, for joining us over here, finding time. Th this was thank example you very of the much. same thing.
Thank you yeah. very much. Honestly, like you guys have done a lot of work and that pipeline, like I'm using the pieces of it in my work anyways. So, I mean, you guys have done so much work and it's just really great, you know, to see this. And but thank you for inviting me to the call today as well. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. So, yeah, uh, it's so stay, nice to have you on. Stay, stay on in, in, in our Slack channel. We can talk uh, later on about multi-threading, etc. Uh, yeah, and uh, because it's, I think it's everything that uh, for today. So I would like to thank you and uh, all of you. And we we see us in two days on Thursday, the same time, the same place. Uh, yeah, thank um, you very much, and have nice. well, probably I, I will skip Thursday because yeah. um, well, I'm chairing session uh, at Harvard. Yeah, uh, they towards community meetings, so probably I will skip. And I mean, like, no, yeah. no, pro no problem. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, just uh, good to know, yeah. but but I think that we can communicate on Slack, by the way. So it's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Thank you very much once again, and uh, see you in two days. I see you. Yeah. Uh,